Hello everyone, this is LockOS, and welcome back to Star Citizen for IAE 2953 coverage on November 24th, where we're going to cover our uh, second haul of the day, uh, Mirai and Misk. Uh, Mirai is going to be the smaller of the two manufacturers. I believe they only have two uh, two or three ships in game right now. Uh, it depends on, and third ship depends if Misk has uh, fully transferred over the one ship over to Mirai. We will see when we get to exploring the hall. Uh, also of note, uh, there is uh, RSI tomorrow as the last full ship manufacturer in game. Uh, after RSI uh, d does their uh, ship show tomorrow, um, that's basically going to be it for manufacturers. They're going to be obviously best in show on Sunday with weapons and armor, but the best in show ships and the weapons and armor display is going to be a one day display on Sunday. Uh, after that, there's the IAE finale where they basically have um, rental kiosks and you can kind of like just walk around the empty hall, but there really isn't anything really there on the finale. So uh, if you want to at least see a little bit more of the stuff in game, uh, make it, make your way to the uh, hall tonight, tomorrow, and on Sunday. Um, do keep in mind that while IAE, that while IAE does end, end with the in-game festivities uh, more or less towards the... Uh, after it on Sunday on the on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, the ship sales will continue. So, at the very least, you'll be able to make money on those. Or not make money, but you'll be able to buy any ships with real life money on those days. Uh, as you can see from the hollow display here, uh, it looks like we're gonna have uh, a decent amount of ships to cover, uh, especially some of the larger ships. see here let's do something interesting uh, we have the prospector uh, we're gonna start obviously clockwise formation on uh, we're gonna start with the prospector uh, I do have the prospector as a loaner for another one of my ships uh, the prospector is an entry-level mining ship it does have two uh, laser repeaters for self-defense but uh, as their size ones they really don't do a whole lot bit of a glitch there but uh, Misk uh, does have a did, did did give the prospector a little bit of a cabin here for the miner, so you can actually uh, do mining out in the verse and then uh, come back here in the cabin to log out for the day. Uh, you have a bed, you have some uh, some store your components up there. You have even a little uh, food storage and water area over here. You also have your own little bathroom back here. You have your toilet shower sink combo. You even have a little bit of a storage cabin right there for all your uh, personal needs. And again, you also have a lot of uh, component access in this little cabin as well. For this cabin, you have a cockpit here with excellent visibility pretty much all around. And this is where you do all your mining from. Now, keep in mind with the Mist Prospector, you're not... Uh, it is great for solo mining. In fact, I would recommend, um, if we're going to go into mining... Uh, while the mole is uh, more powerful than arguably mine uh, most things when fully crewed, there is that caveat with the mole that you, desperate, you definitely need uh, the mole to be fully um, crewed in order to actually be effective. Uh, you can technically get away with only having um, the mole crewed with one additional person, but really to get the most out of the mole, you need the full crew. Um, the Miss Prospector can do things, uh, can mine sh uh, things solo, but it does run into the issue where um, the ship is not quite, uh, the stock laser might not be powerful enough to mine uh, a decent bit of things in the verse. Uh, you can still mine quite a bit, um, but there are definitely more valuable and uh, harder deposits that the Miss Prospector by itself uh, cannot mine. Uh, you can possibly use two Prospectors and if you want to mine in a group. Uh, However, if you want to mine a group, uh, I would just go for a mole over the prospector. Uh, unless you and a friend both own a prospector, in which case, uh, go for it. I'm just going to buy and uh, wolf down a watermelon piece so I don't dehydrate and starve. Alright, that'll buy me enough time. Uh, you know what? There we go. Huh. 
hydrate up so that way we're uh, good to go for the rest of this tour. I did spend a bit of time uh, taking care of some other things in between episode recordings, so that's why my character was dehydrated, but... I do believe that's component access back there, by the way. Uh, I don't think that's... Uh, I don't want uh, it back there, so you can definitely want to open door. So go ahead and close that door. Need a little door back there for the best prospector, but definitely recommend it for the solo miner. Uh, do be keep in mind, like I said, uh, you won't be able to mine everything with the prospector by itself, but you'll be able to mine quite a bit with the prospector by itself. Uh, next, we get to a very uh, interesting ship, the Miss Starfare. Uh, this is indeed a very large ship from Misk. Uh, it is currently the only ship in game that can refuel other ships. Other ships are. There is another ship or two that are planned to have this functionality in game. Uh, that would be the Vulcan with drones. But as is, this is the only ship that can really do that in game right now. And weirdly, um, the Miss Starfarer isn't letting me deploy the ramp. All right, let's see if we can't. It might be just a glitch it with this that uh, the Miss Starfarer uh, allows you to open the door, but doesn't allow you to deploy the uh, ramp. No. glitch uh, with the uh, system, but oh well. Um, there is another Miss Starfarer variant over there. Uh, so the Miss Starfarer is huge. Uh, you can technically fly it by yourself if you want to refuel other ships by yourself, but it's not really meant for that. Um, their feeling pods, by the way, are interchangeable, so you can swap out with different pods and different booms. Uh, so there is some interesting modularity with the Starfarer. However, uh, the important thing to note with the Starfarer is its interior is old, and it definitely is showing its age, because this is one of the oldest... This is basically right now the oldest uh, ship model in-game that has been left unchanged, so there's quite a lot of um, interesting aspects to it. So we'll see if the, um, the Gemini over there is basically the same as the... Uh, Gemini Starfarer is the same as the regular Starfarer. Um, and basically, I believe Anvil or um, Aegis... Uh, cooperated with MISC and they uh, made some modifications to the design and then MISC uh, basically produces and owns the uh, distribution for the uh, Gemini Starfarer variant. Uh, we'll see if we can get into that Starfarer variant to see what the inside's like there. Because um, otherwise the two are identical except for a different weapon uh, loadout. The Ge Gemini, instead of a fuel scoop in the front that allows it to take in hydrogen fuel and process it to then uh, sell us fuel later on, the Gemini has a missile pod in the front. That's the only difference between the two, really, other than the paint job and the missile pod. Um, just those two differences between the two ships. So we'll get to the Gemini Starfarer later. Um, let's get on. Let's showcase the Hall A first, actually. We're going to do a little bit of a different um, loop this time. So the Hall series has uh, five different variants. There's the Hall A, B, C, D, and E. Uh, hall A is the smallest. Hall C is the uh, smack dab in the middle of the size group. And then you have the D and E, which are humongous. I am surprised. Um, this is the first time seeing the C in game for me. So I am surprised that it fits. Although that's because the Hall C right now, there, right there, is actually in its condensed form. Uh, you'll see a model of it uh, fully exp uh, expanded out there. Uh, this Hall A also uh, has like, all, like, all the Hall A series. Um, the middle compartment uh, right uh, here, in between the engine and the uh, compartment, 
actually expands out and uh, deploys some cargo grids that the cargo then attaches onto. Uh, I own the Hall A, and I can't highly recommend this ship enough for people who really want to get into the cargo gameplay. Let's see here if I can... There we go. Unfortunately, um... There we go, in our ship. Sometimes it's a little hard to see the, um... I think with how the, uh... Sometimes with the ship hall, trying to, like, find the entrance is a little bit hard sometimes. Even though you know where it roughly is. Anyways. Hall 8. Uh, once you enter the ship, you enter into the component bay here. Uh, the component bay also is your... Uh, airlock and suit locker here, so you can load up with your suit. Uh, you can uh, put your um, space suit in here. Uh, have all your components here, so that way uh, you can just have all that utility stuff right in the middle of the ship. Separated from the airlock is the habitation module back here. Uh, it's a bit. More, it's similar to the prospector, but it's actually a little bit uh, more spacious and more. Uh, uh, luxuriously uh, complemented. You have your weapons locker as a separate locker up here. You have a bit more of a dedicated kitchen up here with a little mini fridge down below on the side. You have a bathroom back here, shower toilet combo as is infamous for Star Citizen. And you have your own little bed right there and uh, I believe again that's your own little water dispenser and your own little personal storage uh, and a, basically a cupboard, cupboard, uh, a cupboard, uh, cupboard right there. I want to say a cubby pole but it's, it's a cupboard. It's similar, but... Anyways, uh, and then you have the bridge up here. Um, again, you have nice wide viewing angles off to the side. You even have a little bit of window space up above, which is nice. And you have windows down below here. Um, not very noticeable. I'm quite sure they let light in um, whenever uh, you're out and exploring. But otherwise, uh, your main windows are going to be up there. And you have some nice... Uh, and these control panels here. You also have uh, functional uh, switches here, which is uh, something that's coming on with the newer ships. I do believe the transform switch extends the uh, cargo. I doubt it's going to do much, but we'll see what it, uh, happens. Alright, so it didn't expand uh, like I thought. I thought they would turn it off, but um, Hall A is relatively cheap for the amount of cargo that you can carry. And it's relatively simple to fly. Uh, this is a single man ship, or a single uh, pilot ship, rather. Uh, either way. Uh, you can definitely have, uh, you have your two guns up front uh, for your self-defense, although that's all oh, again, sort of like the Prospector. Uh, you're you're mostly using them as a deterrent, uh than doing any actual dog fighting. The whole, the whole series is not in any way, shape, or form really able to defend itself other than those two little turrets. Uh, its main defense is uh, escorts, getting someone else to defend you, or operating in areas where there's not a lot of uh, fighting. So don't expect to take the ship into any dangerous areas without uh, repercussions. Um, but if you're wanting to trade within the Stanton system or any other, uh, if you want to basically do... Uh, some uh, if you want to start out your Star Citizen journey doing trading in like more peaceful areas of the verse, uh, not really fighting a whole lot of pirates or taking cargo into the more dangerous areas, uh, solo flying a Hall A is a really good bet. And while the Hall A is not, I believe, uh, sold in any starter packages, um, I don't think it's horrendously expensive for a Star Citizen ship. Um, and but, and it's considering that most starter ships are uh, very light on cargo. Like, most starter ships, you're not getting any more than, I believe, like, 6 or 8 SCU. Uh, going from that up to 64 SCU of cargo space is a huge leap up. And it's not, again, that much more... Uh, it's not that expensive uh, in verse. So, Hall A, highly recommend for starting your cargo career. Uh, if you really want to go into cargo, uh, can't recommend it enough. Uh, this is a closer look at the uh, Miss Starfarer Gemini. I just want to pop this 
closed door. Okay, so for whatever reason, um, we're not going to be able to look at the interior of the uh, Starfarer Gemini. Um, just know that the uh, interior of the Gemini is very... Or the, uh, of the Gemini and uh, regular Starfarer is very, very old. So that is going to be a huge attraction from it, and I don't know if they ever really intend on uh, redoing or remastering the interior of either ship, other than to do a gold standard pass for uh, components and the like. Uh, going from Hall A, uh, we are skipping the Hall B, because it's not implemented in-game yet. Um, there really hasn't been much word either or on the Hall B. Uh, there was a little bit of um, stuff on the progress tracker uh, referencing some work on the Hall B, but I don't think it's intended to be released um, as a priority. Uh, it might not be a priority for a while, um, because they have the Hall C, uh, which is the larger ship, um, and now they have the smaller ship, so I don't know if the Hall B is going to be a priority next year or not. Um, I kind of hope it is. Uh, it would be nice to get the, uh, the middle ground ship between this larger Hall C and the Hall B, Hall A in the verse, um, but who knows when the Hall B will become around. Anyways, uh, there is a, well, there is a docking collar on the Hall C. Uh, while the ship is landed, there is also a, a, a crew elevator that you can access and climb up here onto the, uh, ship into with, uh, you have a airlock here. That does actually connect with the larger airlock uh, docking collars. So this is not the uh, small circular docking ring. This is the do larger docking collar that the ship will connect to. So this is actually usable in verse right now, which is good. Uh, not a lot of ships have these docking collars. Uh, a lot of ships have the docking rings, which are not currently implemented. So, huge plus for a ship for having uh, that docking collar. Um, uh, and it's also a huge plus that uh, this is kind of sort of all in one room. So, the ship only needs one airlock for either docking with a station or docking or actually exiting through the elevator down below. Also, with an airlock room, it has suit lockers, which are pretty standard for par for the course. And you also have this door here, which is the airlock door to actually access the airlock, so go ahead and do that. Interestingly, gravity generator is located here. I do believe uh, a lot, some of the components are actually scattered here on the front half of the ship. So there is that. Let's go to the back end of the ship uh, here. Uh, let's do it right now. So the back half of the ship, there is this tunnel access, and that's because uh, when the ship uh, deploys its cargo spindle, this tunnel will expand out, and um, the various uh, cargo pa uh, grid pads will actually uh, fold out. Um, but the engine room, or engineering, has uh, a good number of the components is back here. So you have the two uh, lower, I believe those are the two lower engines, and I do believe the Miss Starfarer has two engines up above. Engineering panel uh, right there. You also have an elevator for going between the floors up here. Don't know what happened to it. Might be a bug. Uh, this is a newer ship. Uh, they tend to sometimes release ships, and then uh, they tend to get bugged out sometimes. So here we are on the upper deck. There we go. Oh well, missing elevator. Uh... Hopefully, you're, uh, hopefully if you buy one of these or you own one of these, that's working in there, your current version. Other than that, we have an airlock access up here. So there are actually no engines up here. Uh, I guess your two main engines are down below. And you have an airlock access out here, where if you need to exit the rear of the ship to do any maintenance work, uh, 
This is not an airlock in the sense that this is a docking collar area up here. This is just a rear access, uh, a rear uh, airlock, so that if you need to um, abandon ship um, from the engineering bay, uh, you can just jump out here and escape. And or um, if you're in orbit and you're stationary, uh, you can also just use this little exit here to uh, do maintenance work on the rear half of the ship as well. So this is an option for. Uh, Another uh, uh, option to exit the ship, which is definitely useful on these larger ships, because sometimes, with like with the Carrick, uh, you could easily be in some part of the ship and where you're just like buried deep within the bowels, and you're just like running and bailing for the exit. Other than that, little, other than that little airlock back here, uh, again, there's also a uh, suit lock back here, the suit locker back here for the engineer. Exit through the airlock up here. Not a lot of component access here on this second deck, by the way. It's just literally the access to the um, airlock at the rear of the ship. In case you need to do um, maintenance on the rear of the ship. There's actually also a... Oh, this is the second floor. Okay. So we somehow... Uh, when I got confused and I thought we were at the bottom again, clammed up, uh, we immediately just went onto the second ladder, which is kind of annoying sometimes with ladders. It's really hard to tell times, sometimes tell if you're, did you really get off? Did you really get on? Anyways, uh, second deck here on the engineering bay. Then, let's see what we have back here. Open this up. Escape pod. Back here. Um, you have uh, battery components back here. Uh, you have an EVA escape pod back here. You guys can open up and just jump in there if you don't have your spacesuit or you need to get out in a hurry. Guess it looks like a cooler is back here. Um, I think that's a power plant. Uh, let's see, another shield component back there. Oh, there's a, there's another engine. Uh, I guess that's the other engine, and I guess the uh, the other on your the other one on your side is located back there somewhere, but. This is another uh, component bay. So this is where uh, more of your components are stored back here. Let's go down here. Up. And down. Uh, this is going to be one of those bugs, isn't it? Alright. Drastic measures. Nope. I get stuck in some kind of bug. This might be a known bug, uh, and this is a known bug with ladders and, De and Star Citizen. Sometimes the game just goes, oh, you want to be on the ladder again. It's like, no, I do not want to be on the ladder again. No, no, don't put me on the ladder again. All right, last... See my cart rate climbing too. Let's see here if I can climb up. All right, so this might be a known bug. I am going to. I'm going to have to uh, put a cut in there. Oh, wait, no. I, I freed myself. Okay. We're about to do something crazy. Uh, I'm going to try to jump down from the lift. Try if I can jump over this. There we go. All right. We did some uh, parkour, but we managed to get over here. Um... 
just hit the elevator. Hopefully the elevator is working in your version and it actually exists. Um, otherwise, ladders right now, uh, I wouldn't trust. Alright, so after the engineering bay, um, on the other side of this little uh, airlock, uh, little midsection of the ship, more component access to here, and there's actually all of the uh, escape pods back here. So you have four escape pods, and again, more uh, life. Co you have more component access back here. Also of uh, note, it looks like we have a uh, ladder up here, and I think this is where um, the habitation is actually on this ship. Fortunately, it is a ladder we had to climb, so we'll see if the ladder is going to behave itself here. Should probably save this for last. Alright, one last. Alright, we're going to make the second to last attempt, and then... Let's see here if I can use the power of F4 camera and zooming in and out to see. Can make so it looks like that is very much the living quarters of the ship. Um, all right, we're just gonna go back down. Maybe if it maybe it'll behave this time. There we go. Uh, all right. So this is the top deck. Uh, there is a tractor beam control. Uh, there is a tractor beam control station up here. Uh, so you can control, I believe, the various tractor beams from this room to load and unload cargo from the uh, hall C, uh, where you might not have a ship that help you uh, load and unload. You, at least, you could at least have the ability to do it with your own tractor beams here. And we have the living quarters all back in here. Uh, interestingly, we have uh, four rooms back here, uh, four beds for the crew up here. Uh, it looks like you do have a little bit of a window overlooking um, maybe the outside of the world, um, depending, I guess, if that's open or not. Um, looks like that's just a mirror texture right now, uh, so no idea what's going on with that um, at the moment. We can go ahead, uh, you have a, uh, your kitchen. Uh, you have a dining room table there. Uh, you have four individual crew bunks there. Looks like you have a decent sized kitchen, however, for uh, just four crew members. Quite a lot of cooking space back here for them. A uh, little bit of a counter space to put some small plates there, I guess. And it looks like you have a single bathroom over here. Oh, that's right. That's interesting. It, 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 there is a bathroom back here. Uh, there's a single bathroom, shower, toilet combo up here, but up uh, in front there's actually storage space for each of the individual crew members up here. So, your crew member storage is through the bathroom, which is, I guess, where you need to store your own uh, personal uh, clothing back there, so that makes sense that it's there. Alright, let's see here if I can just jump down. There we go. Bit risky, but you kind of have to do it. Alright, and now we get to the Hall C's bridge. It's very similar to the uh, Starfarer's bridge, although a bit smaller. Uh, there are, looks like there's a uh, there's the helmsman and then co-pilot right there, as well as the captain's chair. So, you have actually a dedicated captain's chair for the Hall C, as he overlooks uh, the wide, wide uh, window up here. Uh, almost 180 degrees um, viewing, but it's a very narrow slit. But then again, this is a very large ship. It's not getting into combat a lot. Um, it's whole. Um, it just needs the visibility from side to side, uh, just to make sure it's not running into anything on the sides. 
and just it's really mainly made, and this ship really is mainly only meant to uh, fly within uh, space. Uh, the only time a ship like this would enter uh, this compact mode is uh, to land on a planet side to do uh, servicing on the ground or to let the crew off. Uh, most of the time, uh, it's going to be having the cargo uh, spindles extended, and it's going to be laden with cargo going from one space station to another space station, um, possibly in the gas giants. I do know Crusader, uh, the gas giant, uh, can actually be uh, flown through in the uh, uh, hull sea. You can fly through the glass gas giant to Orizin, dock at... Um, Orizin's uh, spaceport, and then you can do cargo transfers there. Other than that, uh, that is it for the whole sea. Uh, it is as big as a, as quote unquote big as a ship as it is. Um, it is actually relatively smallish and compact. Is there a way to summon the elevator? Eh, oh well. We're just gonna ju jump down and then jump out. There we go. That is interesting. As big as the hull seat can get, um, in its condensed form, there isn't really much to it. Oh, hold on. Is that the docking ring? Oh, that, uh, yeah, it's docking collar. Okay, yeah. That is actually a docking collar right there. Okay, so it's not a docking, um, ring uh, for its smaller ships and the actual docking collar. Although it could use the um, smaller uh, hull. Who knows? Uh, hull C looks like it does actually have two small guns um, to defend itself. Um, I don't know if there's a turret on here to sell for self-defense. There might be with the co-pilot, um, but it's not really meant for um, defending itself. Oh, and here's a model of the hull C when it's expanded. So you can see that it easily doubles in size and in length and pretty much almost doubles in size so uh the hull sea i could imagine would fully expanded would end would uh, extend from all the way in the back of the hull probably um to like almost right about here i would imagine or right about here it's it's a huge ship huge ship great for cargo running and um uh, as a group uh you can't technically possibly fly it solo but it's so large you're gonna want to uh, at least have uh, one or two people helping you out uh, manage it especially once damage control becomes a thing because all of the uh, ship's damage control is at the rear end of the ship and when the cargo is when you have the cargo on the spindle uh, with a double length of the ship uh, you're going to have to have someone uh, run from the front of the ship to the back of the ship to repair something. And you don't want to do that in the middle of a firefight uh, while not being able then to run back to the front of the ship to actually fly it. Just not a fun time all around with all that. Alright, so we want to go to uh, Zenith Hall 3 and 4 are closed. So I think the two rear halls are the ones where uh, all the action is for the rest of this uh, IAE. Which means we got a duck underneath here. And there's mining. All right, there we go. Toggle the sprint in. Run all the way through mining. And we get to the Freelancer Hall. These are sort of, um, the Freelancer series uh, has a lot of competitors now, but for a while this was like the uh, the only uh, small, uh, mid-sized, uh, small slash mid-sized ship uh, in-game. Decent bit of firepower. Uh, there are four tur uh, there are four size two guns the pilot can control, plus a two size uh, two turret in the back. And there is a decent number of size 3 and size 2 missiles on each variant. Uh, variants do 
uh, very uh, a little bit between each other in terms of what weapons they have, but it's generally four guns that the pilot can control, um, decent like around eight missiles of varying sizes, and then a, a rear turret that can protect its rear and up above. Standard Freelancer has a has this cargo bay here where it can fit. Um, it can only fit uh, the motorbikes. So you're not going to be able to fit any of the uh, other ground vehicles other than maybe a PTV or STV back here. Uh, it's too narrow of a cargo bay to hold any vehicles, but it is a good enough uh, it is good enough size for a cargo bay. Standard Freelancer uses the, the mid cargo room uh, mid room here for uh, cargo. Plus there is a the small size docking ring up there as well. And all Freelancers have the same forward cabin, so I'm not going to repeat. Um, Make, make, make repeat visits to this room for the other variants, but they have four beds. A what was once I believe an engineering station, although I don't think that's functional in game anymore. And there is a bathroom, shower on either side of this uh, of these doors here. Although I don't think they're functional right now. Um, again, this is a very old ship. They believe it or not, though, this is not the first uh, version of the Freelancer. This is actually the second remake of the Freelancer, and it's still, even then, a fairly old ship. Otherwise, the cockpit is, uh, even though it is a relatively small ship, it is actually meant for four people. Uh, you only really need the, uh, this is ship, however, even though it's meant for four people, can be flown solo with the co-pilot, with the pilot up here. There is a seat for a co-pilot and two support seats. Uh, however, if you're going to fly with uh, another person, uh, you want to use the turret that is in the rear to make the most of it. Otherwise, uh, you can definitely have two other people. Uh, this is that makes it. This makes it a really good uh, ship for group play. Uh, if you want a smaller ship for group play, uh, you could easily have two other people uh, run security. They can do. They can be the FPS people while you have two people in the ship uh, defending it and using it for air cover and air support. Also, like I said, good bit of. Uh, Good bit of cargo space in here, plus it's on a ramp, so uh, you can get uh, puts on a ramp, so you can get uh, bo you can do it for box delivery missions uh, of a more serious variety. Freelancer Dur is the longer ranged version of the Freelancer. Uh, it has attritions on the uh, side turrets. Again, it's only different missile loadout and location, but it's there. Plus, you have the rear turret up above. Say rear cargo hatch space. Middle cargo bay here is more uh, basically internal. Uh, these are basically internal fuel tanks that the Dur has to expand its range. Freelancer Max is different because this is the wide body version of the Freelancer. This can carry some of the ground uh, more. The, this can carry some more of the ground vehicles in game, uh, especially the wider-bodied uh, cyclones and the, I believe, the rock series of mining vehicles. The wide body allows you to fit those vehicles in quite comfortably. Middle bay has again some more cargo space uh, for your uh, various cargo as well. So you're not the again you have more cargo here like in the regular standard freelancer. But the, again, the main. Uh, the main appeal of the Dur of the sorry the Max is this large cargo bay back here that also doubles as a very nice uh, vehicle bay for uh, ground ops. Otherwise, again, you have your little top turret and you have your uh, side guns. Freelancer Misc is a uh, it's a bit more of a rarer variant. Uh, this is the missile variant or the militia variant of the Freelancer. Get narrow cargo bay if you need to carry uh, cargo for your ground operations or uh, for your uh, missions. But really, the main purpose of the Dur is a uh, it's a militia variant that carries a lot more firepower. And the Dur actually has, I believe, uh, a crap ton more of the uh, I think these are size three missiles that it carries. And it basically its whole job is to basically be a missile boat that lobs a whole crap ton of missiles and firepower towards a target uh, to take out larger, more uh, heavily armored targets. Another year, another uh, I definitely know with the uh, miss, um, 
you definitely want, I believe, the second crew member because they can, I believe, go into missile operator mode and do a lot more of the missile targeting and uh, operate the uh, rear turret for defense. Otherwise, uh, Freelancers, uh, they are definitely a very popular ship. Uh, I will say, however, uh, as you can kind of see, they are definitely older ships. There are a lot of uh, Freelancer competitors uh, out there on the in the market, like you have the Crusader C1 series, you have the Mercury Star Runner, uh, a whole crap ton of uh, ships now compete with the Freelancer and that are a lot more modern and have a lot more uh, modern uh, functionality. So you might want to consider one of those over the Freelancer, but the Freelancer is still a solid ship, uh, especially the Max. Uh, the Max in particular is solid just because it has a wider uh, bay to fit some of the more larger vehicles in and fit them in more uh, comfortably. It's not quite as a snug fit on some of the other ships. Running over to the last bay here of Misk and Mirai Day, we have, I believe, the Reliant series as well as the Fury series from Mirai. Uh, which is Misk's uh, spin-off manufacturer. And uh, a bit of a conspiracy theory is uh, time for me. I get the feeling in future IAEs and um, even Invictus leaks, when uh, some of these manufacturers expand even more and more further out with their uh, sh the amount of ships they can carry, I believe these are um, probably going to lead into an additional haul behind uh, this sh uh, hull. So it's, it's always fun to see them plan out for the future and like go like, okay, we know in the future there's going to be even bigger ships and even on, uh, some of these manufacturers are just going to have a crap ton more ships, so we better uh, build an additional hull for some of them. Aegis is already bordering on that territory. And last but not least, we have the Zenith Hall back here. Where we have the uh, Reliant series and the Fury series. Uh, Reliant series are interesting. This is their landed configuration. When they take off and go into their normal conflict configuration, uh, they basically turn 90 degrees and go vertical. Uh, the Reliance series are interesting as starter ships because they are actually a two-person starter ship. The Send uh, is the one I own of this, and it's actually a, actually one of the few uh, science gameplay ships that we have in game. So a lot of the of these uh, Reliance series, the especially the non-cargo variants, uh, non-cargo variants uh, take the rear uh, pod back here and give you two beds, as well as a little bit of a functionality area over here. And for the science variants, there is this little uh, science console over here. You have a little microscope and a uh, sample container box right here. You also have a shower sink toilet combo right here. Although I can imagine uh, you're not gonna have much privacy, although you get a decent bit of privacy, uh, so long as the other person's in bed or at the cockpit. Uh, these uh, component there's a little bit of a component room back here. Uh, note, however, when the ship rotates 90 degrees, uh, this door heals. This door here seals off, and uh, you won't be able to have access to the cockpit. So uh, make sure your co-pilot gets in uh, before the pilot does. Otherwise, the uh, co-pilot will be stuck back here um, doing uh, doing whatever they can back here. Sometimes that's what you want. Other times that's not what you want. So. Definitely uh, keep that in mind when piloting your Alliance series. You have the uh, Mako here. Mako is supposed to be a bit of a faster variant, and it's also supposed to be a bit of a, uh, a quote-unquote streamer's uh, ship because the whole point of the Mako is to basically uh, record events in-game and transmit them across the way. Uh, this is when uh, Star Citizen uh, came around when streaming was starting to really kick off. And YouTubers are trying to uh, really become a thing, so you have a actually you have a panel back here, and this is supposed to become like your uh, broadcasting station. And then you from this broadcasting station, 
control the uh, camera on the tip right there. And you're supposed to get like a really cool ang uh, camera shots from there and all that fun stuff. Otherwise, the Mako is supposed to be the faster, the fastest variant of the Reliant series. So there is that. Next up, we have the Reliant Core. Uh, the Core has, uh, compared to the Science variant, uh, Core has a couple more uh, guns on it. It's a bit more de uh, defensible that in that sense. And it actually has a decent bit of cargo space. It actually has six SCU of cargo here in the Reliant Core. However, unlike the other two variants, the Reliant Core does not have beds. So keep that in mind with the Core. No beds. Uh, just that 6 SU of cargo. And then we have possibly the, uh, one of the more interesting variants of the Reliant, the, uh, Tana. Tana, again, has two beds. It has its own, uh, shower sink combo right here. It also has this little bit of cargo space back here for one SCU of cargo. And this is meant for like uh, mission boxes. So if you ever have a uh, mission to uh, go to an area, grab a box and uh, deliver it somewhere or like retrieve a box or something, uh, this is your one SCU of cargo space for your mission box. And then over here, it has a, couple, a bit more storage for um, like suit lock. Uh, is it basically for like armor back here? And then uh, you have a gun rack. Because uh, it's the Tana is actually your military uh, variant, your combat variant, where I believe it has um, additional missile launchers in the uh, Tana, as well as uh, more powerful uh, wing-mounted guns on the uh, tail end. So the Tana is a bit more um, combat-focused, uh, but definitely has a bit more, uh, definitely has uh, bigger guns and more firepower, and also it has a little interior area for mission boxes, uh, so you, when you're out and around the verse uh, dealing with threats um, and you're like, oh, you need to take a mission to like uh, go into an area, fight your way through it, grab a box and extract it. Uh, you have a little bit of cargo space for that as well as gun racks to uh, store all your weapons when you're not uh, using them in fights. Now the Tana and the Reliance series are considered starter ships. However, uh, not a lot of people use them. Uh, it's kind of one of the starters that's fallen to the wayside. It's a bit of an odd... Um, a starter ship. Uh, it's a bit weird with the stats. Uh, flight modeling. I'm quite sure it's going to get a uh, flight modeling pass um, and maybe come out to be really good. Uh, but right now, not a lot of people use the Reliance series. Uh, but I will say the Reliance series, uh, especially the Core, is actually fairly good because um, just if only just because the Reliant Core is one of the few starter ships that's relatively cheap that has interior cargo space and can like carry around more than one person so there is that to consider um it is also a a beautiful cockpit when the cockpit uh in the, sh in the uh, ship rotates 90 degrees uh you do get some excellent viewing angles out of the cockpit as you're like as you sit suspended there's very little that's blocked uh i believe the pilot swings upwards so you won't get like perfect upwards visibility but you will get a whole lot of visibility elsewhere now, for complete unrivaled visibility, we have the Fury series. Uh, of the Fury series, the MX is the missile boat variant that is literally a pod with an engine with as many missiles strapped to it as humanly possible. Um, uh, with missile being its only armament, I cannot recommend this ship at all. Uh, unless you have faith that missiles will one day become good and one day soon they will become good because that's it you have granted you have a crap ton of missiles i believe you have eight size two missiles and eight size one missiles but after you fire off all those missiles you are useless so keep that in mind with the mx you have the uh standard fury which as a snub craft uh has four size one guns uh it's a bit more useful than it's definitely more useful than the Fury MX because these are laser repeaters, so you're not uh, ammo constrained. Uh, also, of the Fury series, like all the Fury series, by the way, including the one I'll be covering next, uh, they are very compact. They can basically fit in almost any ship uh, 
that's available that actually has uh, enough room for vehicle storage. Uh, probably not like all vehicles, uh, all ships, uh, all the ships that can have vehicle storage. Uh, there are probably going to be a few that could only really host a uh, ground vehicle, but if it can generally carry like a cyclone, I don't. I, it probably very likely be able to at least carry one Fury. And then we have the Fury LX, which is the racing variant of the Fury, which doesn't have any weapons at all. So it's not really a combat ship, but it's very much de a dedicated racing ship. So if you want to go uh, race around the verse, and, but you don't want a really fancy or expensive racing ship, uh, you can pick up an, a Fury LX and use that for your racing. However, in order to reach your racing destination, you will probably need a ship that does have a quantum drive. So, possibly get a Nomad. I think the best, if your your best option is if you want to use this ship to race, and it is a very small, nimble ship. Uh, so this is definitely a you could definitely uh, be competitive in this. Uh, you definitely would probably want to pick up a Nomad and try to stick this where the uh, in the rear cargo bay of the Nomad and use the Nomad. To transfer yourself from uh, race location to race location, and then once you're at your uh, location for your race, pop out the no, uh, pop into the Fury, and then go off and do the race cir racing circuit. And that's it for uh, Mirai. Uh, Mirai has only these three ships here on the main floor. I am going to double check because I f do believe there's one more ship. That we are missing from the MISC uh, lineup. And that is the uh, Razor. And I want to see if it's in the lower... There it is. The Razor series are in the lower hull. They usually are in the uh, lower hull um, anyways. So we're going to go there. And once again, it is kind of a shame that we're not able to go into the Miss Starfarer, um, especially because it recently did get its um, utility in game uh, about a year ago, I think, at this point. Uh, but it is very jank inside. I will say that is the one problem with the Starfarer series. It's the interiors are so old, it can really, really, really use a complete overhaul. Not like a. Uh, refresh. It kind of needs an overhaul. Um, just because the IA, uh, Star Citizen, the devs have gotten so much experience now, they, they can really... Um, the quality difference between something that old and like the newer ships is late night and day. Now we get to uh, Misk's ra uh, racing ship, and that is the Razor series. Uh, you have the standard Razor. You have the Razor EX. And then the Razor LX. Now, I believe the EX is the combat variant. Uh, yep, this is the combat stealth variant. Uh, the UE military uses these for, like, interdiction and, like, trying to ch uh, chase down criminals. Like, the it's the advocacy, not necessarily the military that uses these. Uh, for, like, hunting down criminals and doing high-speed chases. But also has like signature reducing uh, materials on this one. The Mirai, yes, good. Uh, okay, I'll get to this uh, in a little bit. Uh, the LX is the is the faster variant. So you have the uh, Mir uh, the LX is the faster quote unquote racer version, and then the standard racer. Is uh, the more quote unquote maneuverable variant. So you either want to you either are going to go for uh, maneuverability or top speed of the two. Uh, I believe their performance is still relatively the same. It's just whether or not you want extra mobility or extra uh, top speed, straight line versus curves. Uh, I will say if I would wanted any racer in game, it would be the race. It would be a racer. Uh, I just like the idea of uh, my racer, my uh, racing ships being more maneuverable than fast. Uh, that way, I could push them a little bit faster and a little bit more forgiving in the corners. Because 
It's entirely possible when Star Citizen to have a racing ship and die faster racing than it is in combat just because you're going for full tilt and you take a turn a little too fast and all of a sudden uh, you're now uh, spaghetti on a wall and it's bad. So I would definitely, uh, my personal uh, favorite choice for a racing ship if I were to get one would be the racer uh, just because it's, uh, I think of all the racing ships, it is probably one of is the most maneuverable. Also note, uh, if you know anything about uh, Star Citizen and you've been following it for a while, uh, even a good while, uh, it was these ships were one time known uh, was were under MISC. However, uh, Star Citizen earlier this year uh, introduced the Mirai brand, and they finally, as of uh, I guess this patch, uh, finally transferred over. Uh, the Razor from Misk into the uh, Mirai brand. So Mirai does actually have now uh, six total ships, uh, two base hulls, and then between the two base hulls, they each have three variants. So that's good to see. Uh, it's good to see that Mirai actually already has a decent number of ships in its little, uh, little lineup right now. Now we get to that favorite time of day, and it's... Holy crap, it's actually uh, less than an hour. Uh... I was thinking Misk would take forever just because of the Starfarer and the Pole Sea being very large ships, but uh, Starfarer, unfortunately, uh, we can't get into. Uh, Misk Odyssey is the exploration ship that Jax McCleary uh, set off into um, back in, I believe, 2951 or 2021. Uh, Jax McCleary took the uh, Miss Odyssey out into the black, and then last year it was the uh, the search for Jax. It, so that was that whole spleel with introducing the Odyssey then and there. Um, that being said, otherwise, uh, it's a basically a very long distance um, uh, exploration ship. Uh, its advantage, quote unquote, over the Carrick is that it has a mining laser, and the whole reason it has a mining laser is to literally just to hunt, a, hunt for a quantanium, mine the quantanium, refine the quantanium, and then use that quantanium to expand its uh, range. So it's very much trying to be self-sufficient out in the edges of the verse. Um, that being said, I do believe the Carrick has better sensors than this. So it is a popular exploration ship. Uh, However, since RSI is getting all the attention with the large ships at the moment, uh, don't expect the ship anytime in the near future. Uh, the Miss Expanse is a ship that I actually picked up, and I believe this is the last ship I picked up um, a couple years back. It's basically a refining ship, where the ship takes the refined ores, uh, sorry, the mined ores um, that uh, your prospectors and your moles uh, picked up, Plocks it into those little area, uh, those little uh, extraction points, uh, extractors here, and refines the materials, and then uh, then drops it off at a cargo ship. Uh, Shipboard refinery gameplay uh, hasn't really been worked on, and the Miss Expanse hasn't really been mentioned as a ship in production. So, I doubt we will see this in a year or two. Uh, this is another one of those ships where the mechanics of it are cool, but since they're so bespoke, I doubt we'll see this ship for a very long time. Maybe when RSI's new proposed uh, Arasta mining ship comes online, then they might uh, go ahead and do this as well, because at that point they'll need to actually get the uh, mining, uh, the refining gameplay uh, in place, so we'll see. And lastly, uh, we have one of Star Citizen's mega ships, uh, the Endeavor. The Endeavor is supposed to be a giant floating science platform, and by giant I mean absolutely massive. Uh, this, is, this is going to rival the Hall CE in size. Uh, I believe that's a size five turret up in the front. Uh, the ship, unlike the Hall series, does not compact. Uh, there's supposed to be four individual bays uh, up here, uh, two on either side, right there, right there, uh, right in f uh, between the engine nacelles, uh, right there, right there. 
two on that side, two on this side, and it's supposed to basically have a swappable science bays, um, do like long, it's basically go out to the black, deep space exploration, um, in the sense that it goes out there and actually does science. It's not finding things necessarily, it's just doing science out in the black. Um, there's also an Endeavor hospital variant, and the hospital variant, I do believe, is supposed to have, um, a lot of, uh, basically the tiered, like, one medical beds. You're supposed to be able to respawn at those, um, tier one medical beds and, uh, revive there and then take off and then get back into the fight. Uh, this is a ship that I believe a long, long time ago, Disco Lando did say that this ship, um, was supposed to definitely be the last uh, ship that they would uh, guarantee would be in the verse uh, whenever uh, the game quote unquote kicks off. That was, however, many, many, many years ago. And there's been no sign of the Endeavor since then. And like I've mentioned with uh, a decent number of the large ships right now uh, over the course of this IAE, Star Citizen is very much focused on the RSI ship, so don't expect the Endeavor to be in game anytime soon, and it's such a big ship, I wouldn't spend the money on it, especially because we have no idea what science gameplay is going to be like, um, and medical gameplay is going to be covered by a decent number of other ships, so I wouldn't necessarily worry about getting the Hope Hospital ship, either. Um, it's one of those ships that's sort of a pipe dream, so I wouldn't worry about getting the Endeavor, um, or again, I wouldn't even really think of any of those, like, giant, even though any of those, like, large, uh, MISC ships, uh, don't expect it to be in game anytime soon. I'm trying to find, like, a quiet space over here. Um, also, what was not shown in any of those, um, hollow viewer halls, um, the hall B, D, and E uh, have yet to be, uh, introduced in-game, so I would definitely say for uh, those ships, uh, definitely uh, the Hall B of all of the other remaining Hall series are pro is probably going to be the most likely to come in the game next. There was, I think, a little bit of concepting done for the Hall B, or a little bit of work done on the Hall B to bring it up to snuff. Uh, However, it didn't look like in any, um, whenever they did the, uh, preview of the next ships to come in the next 12 months for Star Citizen, the Hall B wasn't really, or anything that looked like the Hall B really wasn't shown. So, I don't know if the Hall B is, like, on their priority list, even though it would make sense because it's in between the A and the C. Um, and it's a relatively small mid-sized ship. Um, so, don't expect the Hall B to be in, in, in any time soon, but expect the Hall B probably before the D and the E. Um. Uh, the D and the E, it's, their problems are uh, economy, uh, with just being stuck within the standard system, uh, even the Hall C is going to suffer from this if you do decide to buy the Hall C. Uh, there's not a lot of places to do trading that's orbit to orbit. Uh, the Hall C and above are really only meant to do trading in between stations and planetary systems. So, don't really expect to get uh, anything bigger than the Hall C for quite a long time until we at least have even quite frankly, more than the Pyro system. We're going to have to probably have, like, uh, like the, Mag the, Ma uh, the Magnus system, Terra, Goss, uh, a whole lot more star systems in-game before the Hall D and E even makes sense to own, let alone for the CIG to produce. So, with that being said, uh, this has been Lockco S, uh, signing out from Star Citizen for today. Uh, oh, before I sign out, uh, my recommendations for MISC Day are, if you want to get into mining, go to the Prospector. If you want to go into hauling, go to the Hall A. Otherwise, uh, you might want to consider the Reliant Core A as a starter ship, uh, especially if you like the idea of having a ship with um, some interior cargo space to like put mission boxes or light down. Uh, it's a fun little ship. Um, I, I enjoyed it when I owned it. I do believe, I, I mean, I didn't lose access to it. I do believe that whenever I had my Reliant Core A, it was a loaner for another ship, so... Uh, I don't have access to the Reliant Core right now, but it's still, it was still a fun ship. I did, I enjoyed it when I had it, so. Hall A, 
prospector, maybe the uh, Reliant Core um, for those ships. And then if you really want a high-end racer, go for the uh, Misk. Uh, go for the Misk uh, Razor. Um, if you want a cheaper racing ship, go for the uh, Fury LX. But keep in mind with the Fury LX, you're going to need another ship to load it onto to transport it to the racing event. And that's it for Misk Day. Uh, tomorrow is RSI Day, and it is also the last ship manufacturer that will be showcased here at the IAE. Also, like I uh, predicted uh, when, we, when the uh, ship schedule got released and uh, I talked about earlier, uh, it is going to be very much is going to be also the concept sale of the uh, IAE this year with the RSI Arasta mining ship. Uh, check out Inside Star Citizen for more details on that ship if you want to buy and pledge money for the RSI Arasta. Um, deal, uh, I will talk about it a little bit more then, but I will mention RSI tomorrow is uh, it's going to be a moderately big day, I believe. Uh, they, have a, they have a decent number of ships. Um, keep in mind, RSI... Uh, CIG has explicitly stated they are they are going to do basically an assembly line with all RSI ships. So tomorrow's going to have you a lot to talk about. So tune in tomorrow to make sure you hear all that. And until then, this is Lock OS signing out.